Good evening, good evening, good evening. Welcome to Harvest City Church on a Wednesday evening. We thank you for coming in, sharing your time, sharing the time to be with us. And we thank Pastor Bill Russell for giving me this opportunity to uh, do Bible study. I'm Minister Kevin Hunt. And here at Harvest City Church, we like to say we love the people, we love the community, and we love God. So right there, guys, that's all you need to know. But we thank you, though. Tonight, hopefully, I have a word for you that will encourage you, that will bring hope to your life right now. Because right now, we see a lot of things that are going on in the world right now. And we got the virus going on. We got the protesting going on. And we got many other things going on in this world right now. But how many of y'all know that God is still in control? And let me tell you, when God is in control, everything is okay. Now, people might think that Janet Jackson, when she's on the song, I'm in control. But Janice is not in no control. she got to be in control of her life. But we're talking about in control of this world. And my thing to you guys is Jesus uh, Christ is in control of this world right here. Uh, Tonight, I would like to talk to you about being, I am an overcomer. That's what I would like to talk to you about. But first of all, before I even talk to you about that, let me get back to talking about situation that's going on in the world right now and about that Jesus in control. You know, we Martin Luther King, when he was doing the protests and marching, it would be a song out that they used to sing, say that we shall overcome. A great song right there. And that's what got me to think about this title tonight, that I am an overcomer. You know, yes, we shall overcome and we will overcome because we are in God. Because God let us know that we are overcomer. So, you know, I am an overcomer. But tonight, let me go ahead and give you the scripture, give you time to find it. It's going to be, I'm going to be coming from the New King, the New King James Version, uh, 1 John 5 and 4 and 5. Uh, give you a second to get there. And once you get there, we'll go ahead and we'll get started. Uh, first thing, let's go ahead and get started with the scripture. For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Verse number five says, who is, who is he that overcomes the world, but he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Again, let me read uh, verse four and five again. It says, for whosoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And verse 5 says, Who is he that overcomes the world but he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Let's go ahead and pray right quick. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time of coming together, Father God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted in our sight, Father God. Let you take over, Holy Spirit. Let you take over completely, Father God. Let us know and understand and believe that we are overcomer, Father God. For when Jesus Christ died on the sin and overcame death and sin, Father God, we all became overcomer, Father God. So we just thank you right now, Father God, that we are overcomers. All right, let's go ahead and dive into this tonight. All right, life is always going to throw challenge your way. But God gives you strength and also give, give you a way of overcoming things. That's why we say a lot of time in Romans 8 and 31, say if God is for you, who can be against you? Uh, Psalms 118 and 6 says, the Lord is on my side. I would not fear what can men do unto me? And that's true. If, if God is for me, who can be against me? And then if the Lord is on my side, what can men do, for me, do to me? The virus out there, it's out there. God is in control. The protest was going on right now. God has that as well. My thing that I want to make sure you know tonight that you are an overcomer. I am an overcomer. The Greek word for overcomer is Nike. We also arrive from the word Nike from that. It means to carry off the victory. Now again, it means to carry off the victory. For a second, if you don't know anything about me, 
I've coached basketball for 36 years. I coached other sports while I was, was a teacher in high school, but basketball was the main sport that I coached for that many years. And I know something about winning and losing game, about the victory and stuff. But I also know that every time on the scoreboard, if that score is not in your favor, you not you don't always lose it. A lot of times it's what lesson did we learn from that loss. Let me give you an example. I used to be a track coach, and I run several 5Ks. That's 2.5 miles. I ran those several times when I ran cross country. When I, when I was in the Army, I ran several uh, uh, 5Ks. And one thing I learned is, especially at an early age, is that you don't always lose when you don't come in first. Take, for example, I'm running a 5K, and I get out there and I, and I start running that race. All right. Maybe I didn't come in first, but my thing I always try to tell myself, and also when I'm coaching basketball to my players, is we maybe didn't win on the scoreboard, but what lesson did we learn? All right. There are many lessons we can learn. You can still be an overcomer and still not come in first because there's something you can get out of all the situations that, that your life takes you through. And, and again, when, when, uh, if I'm running the race, you know, I'm going to overcome because, first of all, I started the race. Several people didn't even start the race. I'm going to overcome because I finished the race. And also, I can look at it, I'm an overcomer because if it took me 18 minutes to run it uh, the first time, and I come back and run it this time, and I finish in 16 minutes, I'm an overcomer. I just beat my personal record. So I'm an overcomer. You are an overcomer. And that's what I'm here to tell you tonight, that you are an overcomer. Regardless of what's going on in your life, what the situation is, what the devil throw at you, you are an overcomer. Now, tonight, I'm mostly going to talk about two special uh, people in the, in the Bible. Um, a lot of times, we talk about these two people. We, uh, I'm going to talk about David and Goliath, and then I'm going to talk about Job when he lost everything. Uh, so, I want to talk about those two people. Uh, now, again, let me go back and repeat what I said the Greek word for overcomer was, Nikki, which means to carry to carry off the victory this also is talking about the verb replying to battle this also replied to the battle overcomers are followers of Christ who successfully resist the power and temptation of the world system let me repeat that again overcomers are followers of Christ who successfully resist the power and the temptation of the world system. Now, guys, we got to understand the world is a battleground out there. It, it, it's not a playground. Now, a playground is a place where children go and play, but right now we are adults. And right now in that world out there with everything that's going on, it's a battleground out there. The devil's coming up against us all the time. But one thing I learned about coaching, if I know your game plan, I have a good chance of defeating you. And we know his game plan. We know he come to kill still. All right? We know that in this world. We know that. So we know his game plan. So we know that we gotta, we're going to defeat him because, first of all, the word says that we have defeated him. The word says we have victory. He already defeated, but he just out here trying to mess up our life. And a lot of times we give in to what he's doing out in front of us. Instead of realizing and keeping our focus on God, we begin to buy into a lot of things that he says to us or show us instead of keeping our focus on God. You know, we, we, we got to see this right here, guys. Like, again, we got to become praise and worshipful every day. You know, as I get, as I talk about David and a little bit and Job, guys, and you're going to hear me talk about them being praised and worshipped. But that's the that's the bottom line of why I was created to be a praise and worship. All right, you know, right now on Wednesday night we're here at Bible study. You know, you think about it, guys. Sunday come, you know, that's the day that you know being you know tradition that we go to church and and that's where we praise the Lord and we worship Him, and that's great. But again, by the time 
Monday and Tuesday get here. Now, Monday, we begin to slow down a little bit. It's about like running that race I was talking about a few minutes ago. You start out on Sunday. You get the beginning. You got there because you got that praise and worship. You got all that energy. You really running that race. And then by the time Monday get here, you, you're still running, but you begin to slow down a little bit. Why? It's because the, our praise and worship is not what it was like on Sunday. And it should be. It should be the same. And then by Tuesday get there, and also on Monday, we're getting a little bit of that leftover from Sunday. Tuesday there, it really began to slow down a little bit slower, again, because that praise and worship is not there. Guys, we got to study daily. Then by the time Wednesday get here, we about to the point where we about to fall to drop. Thank God for Bible study. Give us a chance to review. Well, how many of y'all know when you're running a race and you're running about halfway through the race almost, and you heard the term, the monkey on my back? Any of y'all that have run track before or ran cross country, you know what I'm talking about. That monkey on your back. And what that means is that while I'm in this race, I'm running this race, that halfway through the race, I'm, I feel like I want to stop, drop, and just say, I give up. And the same thing with Wednesday. If you ain't kept praising and worshiping the Lord by the time Wednesday get here, we about ready to stop and give up. Not knowing that we got three or four more days to go before we get to Sunday to get refueled again. But there is Wednesday where you can get refueled at Bible study. And when you run it and you get there and that monkey get on your back, again, you have a choice of stopping and keep running. Your choice is to keep your focus on the Lord. Keep praising and keep worshiping. And that monkey that was, that was on your back is going to jump off your back. So my thing is, you catch that second wind about that time. And when you catch that second wind, oh, you finish off strong with that race there. And that's what we're doing. We're running a daily race, guys. A daily race. We ain't worrying about tomorrow. We're worrying about today. we praising and worship God today. And that's what I encourage you to do. Again, I am an overcomer. You are an overcomer. And again, as I said, the world... Is a battleground, not a playground. You know, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. As we see in Ephesians 6, 11 through 17, talk about put on the whole armor of God. And that's what we want to do daily, putting on the whole armor of God. Because again, on that battleground, it's not playtime. It's not recess. On the battleground, it's a war out there. It's a spiritual war. And we got to stay prayed up. We got to stay praised up. We got to stay worship up. We got to stay that way to make sure that we are ready to fight this battle that we go through every day. Well, let's go ahead and get started, like I said, about talking about David. David's one of my favorite characters in the Bible. I love David. I think I love David because David is a person that was uh, after God on heart. Now, David did a lot of crazy things, and as you, and as you see, we will be talking about it. Uh, first is First Samuel. 17 and about 17 where I want to start. So 1 Samuel 17 and 17 is where I want to start. Most of y'all know the story about David and Goliath. I just want to uh, talk about it for a few minutes. First of all, uh, David, uh, father Jesse asked David to take some food to his brother. David had three brothers out there fighting for the army of Israel. Now, understand the army of Israel was out there fighting against Philistine. On one mountain, there was the Philistine. On the other mountain, was the army of Israel. And then Goliath, the, the, the person who David going to have fought against, is going to be coming down to the valley. Going to come down to the valley. So, but David followed Jesse, asked David to take some food to his brother. And David do that. David was an obedient person. David was very young. He goes there. He takes the food to his brother. He begins to ask questions because he's trying to figure out why are y'all standing back here hiding when there's a giant down there, when there's a person down there talking a junk about your God, making fun of your God. David didn't understand that. So David making questions. David began to get on them. What y'all made out of? Who are you? Do you know who you're serving? 
Do you know your God, your real God, that you are sitting here and allowing the Philistine to talk junk about you? Again, David was overcome. All right. And as the, and as David, the more David talked and stuff, his bro, the, his brothers got mad because they didn't like the way David was talking. They were like, you know, you're a little young person. Get out of here. You don't know what's going on. We've been out here fighting. We've been out here for 40 days. Now understand, guys, sometimes when you're around negative people for so long, you begin to be negative. You let that spirit get in you. Now, now it's so great that David had just got out there and didn't have a chance to let that spirit get in him. And you got to understand as well, David was always in the field. David was always by himself, meditating, praising, worshiping the Lord when he was in the field, attending the sheep. So you got to understand, David's like, do you not know he's talking about our God? There are several reasons why David was an overcomer. He did not allow himself to be discouraged by naysayer. Again, he didn't care what his brother say. Even Saul tried to talk negative things to him, say negative things to him. Talk about his youth. He's too young to go out there and fight. There's no way that he can win, you know. And sometimes discouraging worry can come from your family, your friend. So, so sometimes your family, as David's brother, was giving him discouraged word. Sometimes you got to make sure you know the God that you serve. When you know the God you serve, regardless of your family, your friend, or whoever is saying something negative, you just look them in the face and say, I know the God I serve. And that's the key thing, knowing the God that you serve. So sometimes this carriage word can come from your family and friend. David's brothers and the king were trying to discourage him from talking, from being out there. Because David would let them know, hey, if y'all don't go out there and battle and fight, I'll I go out there and do it. And then Saul talked to him. You know, and, you know we have to understand, a lot of times my closest friend sometimes it really can be our worst enemy for us, discouraging and, and be our naysayer to it. So we got to be careful again. Again, we got to know the God that we serve. A lot of times, those who are trying to discourage you do not have the courage to go after the same goal. Let me repeat that again. A lot of times, those who are trying to discourage you do not have the same courage to go after the same goal. And you got to be careful right there. You got to be careful. Whatever you're doing in your life there, whatever goal you're trying to get to, that whoever the person is or the, or, or surrounded, the people surrounding you, you got to hopefully that they are saying the same thing you are saying. Hopefully they're giving you an encouraged word. And by them talking so negative to David, David had to ponder for a minute on his success and victory. You know, understand that David had fought, you know, not just one line. David had fought several lines in Barris and was success, successful. So David knew his God. He knew that his God would deliver him. So David had to ponder that for a second of, of the success and the victory over the lines in the bear. You know, not on the failure or the possibility of, of the failure. No, he wasn't thinking about failure or the possibility of failure. He was thinking about, I can go out and defeat this line. The rest of the army of Israel were thinking about, no, no way. We can't do it. Just like Joshua and Caleb. When Moses sent the 12 spies out there, 10 of them came back and said, no, we can't do it. There are giants out there. But there's two came back. They saw the same thing. They saw the miracle of the honey. They saw the big grapes. But they came back and, and they saw the same thing those other teams saw. They saw the giant. But they knew who their God were. They knew their God. And they knew God was in control. And they knew that God would give them the victory in the battle. So while 10 said no, they couldn't do it, two of them said yes, we can do it. Just like David here. David wasn't thinking about the failure. David really hadn't tasted any failure in his life. Because he always had been successful because he always had God on his side. In order to be an overcomer, you must face your problem head on. Again, in order to, to be an overcomer, you must face your problem head on. In verse, still in 1 Samuel 17, in, in chapter 17, 
looking at verse 45 and 47. You must know who you're fighting for. David understood who he was fighting for. He understood that giant called Goliath was making fun of his God. David was not fighting for himself. He was fighting for his God. So we, you must know who you're fighting for. And David did. David took the challenge. I know who I'm fighting for. I know my God. I know I am an overcomer. Verse, verse 48, right below verse 47, it says, uh, uh, we have to run towards our problems, our giants. So what David did, once David realized that Saul was going to let him go fight, now understand as well, though, Saul was trying to give David his spirits and his sword. David like, no, I already defeated the lions. I already defeated bears with my bare hand. I don't want to go into a battle with something that, that belonged to you. I'm going into the battle with what I know, what I've been successful with. And the thing I tell you is that you also go into battle with what you've been successful with. Prayer, praising, worship. That's what you take in the battle. That's what's going to cause you to be an overcomer. Your faith. Those are the things. But right there, when, when David decided to go and take on Goliath, he didn't take no sword. He didn't take no spirit. He just took what he had, which was his, sling, his slingshot, and he picked up a few stones to take with him. Now, he picked up a few stones, but he only needed one. How many of y'all know when God is on your side, you only need one? You don't need no second, no third. You don't need a backup plan. The first plan God gave you is the plan that's going to work. He gave you that plan for a reason. Now, it might be a day or two before the plan come, come for, for us around, but the plan will come, come uh, before us. But we got to run towards our problems, our giant. We must, feed them, we must meet them face to face. Too many times we, fr we run from our giants. We, you know, we run from our giants. Like hiding from bills, collector when they call, or this goes on. We run from it. But I come tonight to tell you that you are an overcomer. Don't run, don't run from your problem. Don't run from your giant. We ain't running from the virus out there. We are, we are overcomer. The, the song that Yolanda Allen sang, Bless Me, all the time when he, when he says, uh, the battle is the Lord. The battle is not yours. The battle was not David. The battle is the Lord. He's going to fight for us. As I, as I said before, in Psalms 1 and 18, in Psalms 118 and 6, the Lord is on my side. I would not, I would not fear what can men do unto me? There's nothing. There's nothing to fear about. Because I have the Lord on my side. And so, so that song, uh, the battle is the Lord, you know, great song. And that's how David was looking at Goliath. That, hey, this battle is not really mine. It's the Lord. And when David went up against him, he only took one rock for David to defeat him. What everybody else was looking at as being giants in their life, David looked at it as being an opportunity to show to show other people that his God would be with them what's, what was out there. And the same thing with you. Whatever that you think is giant in your life, when you decide to face it, go, go face to face with it, and you defeat it because you will defeat it because you are an overcomer, hey, then you better show people that your God was bigger than what was out there. Let me give you this quote right here. Your identity will be tied to whatever you give your heart to. I love my wife say that all the time. Your identity will be tied to whatever your heart, whatever you give your heart to. Now understand, David gave his heart to the Lord. So his identity was the, was the Lord. That's why he was so successful 
in everything he did, from from the battle of uh, fighting against Goliath, from fighting the lions, and then like David didn't win every battle, but he won majority of the battle. And the battle he didn't win is when he wasn't focused and it, he took his eyes and he wasn't focused on the Lord. But he realized, as long as he stayed focused on the Lord, that he was going to win the battle. Again, your identity will be tied to whatever you give your heart to. You know, and again, guys, you know, we talk about David. I tell you, I love David because David's one of my favorite characters in, in the Bible. But understand that David did a lot of messed up thing there. You know, David did some crazy stuff there. You know, when, you, when we look at the Ten, Command, Ten Commandments, David broke half of those commandments. But the one thing, guys, that you got to understand, you're going to mess up in life, all right? There are going to be situations that nothing will go your way, but just still keep your focus on the Lord. Praise and worship. Praise and worship is what David was, was doing all the time. Because, again, we see that David committed a murder when he had... Uh, when, he, when he put one of his soldiers up front just to be killed in 2 Samuel 11 and 17. David was a liar. 2 Samuel 11, 7 through 8, lying. David committed adultery. 1 Samuel 11 and 4. Da- David was one of his neighbor's wife. 2 Samuel 11 and 3. David stole another man's wife. 2 Samuel 12 and 9. So what I'm just telling is you guys, not telling you that you have a license to go out there and mess up, but we know you're going to mess up because we all are sinners. But my thing to you are, guys, how do you recover from that? Do we recover with our praise and worship like David did for we can be successful, for we can be overcome? Because we are overcome. We was, o- we was overcome when, when uh, Jesus went to Calvary. When he defeated death and sin, we became, we became overcomers then. We had the victory from then. We had the victory. And we still have the victory. Too many times we, we look defeated. We go, we act like we are defeated. We are not defeated. We are overcomers. We will overcome. Now let me switch a little bit to another character, as I was saying earlier. Talk about Job a little bit, and I'm going to give you four characteristics as I talk about Job and his situation. Job was another person to overcome. Again, I could talk about a lot of people who overcame a lot of stuff in the Bible. The Bible is all about overcomers, the people. You know, we talk about Abraham. We talk about Sarah. even talk about Adam and Eve as they was overcome. They was overcomers. So the Bible is filled with people of overcomers. To me, the Bible is like, if you, ever, if you never go to the movie, just read the Bible. You'll find everything in the Bible. You'll find a love story. You'll find drama. You'll find people being murdered. You'll find different things, you know, funny things, comedy things. You'll find it all in the Bible. So you never have to go to the movie. You don't want to. Just read the Bible. Let's get to Job right quick. The reason Job was overcome, the first thing, and go back also as I was talking about this, David was the same thing. Job was overcome because he wasn't. He was in worship. You must be a worshiper. Guys, you got to be a worshiper. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Father. Glory to your name. You must be a worshiper. That's how Job was an overcomer. So the first thing Job was, as I said, was a worshiper. The same thing I said about David. He was a worshiper. That's why he messed up so much, but he was able to continue to find favor and, and you know, find favor in God is because he was a worshiper. Because look at Job's life. Um, it says in the Bible, immediately after the news he had lost his children and nearly all his personal possession, Job 1 in verse 21 said, this is what Job said. Now you think about this. You just lost your kids. Come on, guys. If if we get our car repossessed, we go crazy. We fall apart. If we lose our house, we fall apart. And understand, those are things that, you know, that do mean stuff to us. But but Joe lost his kids. If anyone has children out there, you understand that 
you hold dear to you is your kids and stuff. You want them to be successful. But when, when Joe got the news, immediately he, he said this, this right here. Naked came out, out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return that. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Again, that was Job 1 and 21, where he said, Naked I came out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return, daughter. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So the first thing we got to realize, like I said, we got to be worshipful. We be overcome, we got to be a worshipful. David, we saw it with David. We said throughout the Bible, got to be worshipful. Second thing is, you must have a relationship with God in a revelation of who he is. Again, you must have a relationship with God in a revelation of who he is. And I said that about David back there. He had a relationship with God. All those times, so a lot of times we got to get by ourselves. We got to spend time by ourselves. That's the only way we can develop a lot of time that relationship with God. And he had a revelation of who he is. Just like David knew his God. Knew his God was going to be there. In Job 19 and 25, it's, it says, For I know that my Redeemer lived there. And that he shall stand at the latter days upon the earth. Again, Job 19 and 25 says, For I know that my Redeemer lived, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Job had a, rela- a revelation of Jesus Christ. He didn't curse God. He didn't blame God. He didn't fall under the weight of the situation because he knew something that nobody else knew. He knew his God was a deliverer and a redeemer. Again, he didn't, when this news came to him about his family, his, his, most of his personal possession, he didn't curse God. He didn't blame God. He didn't say because he wasn't like Adam trying to blame Adam. Eve for something that he should have knew better than. No, in, instead, he didn't blame God. He, he didn't fall under the situation because he knew, uh, knew something that we didn't know. He knew that his God was a deliverer and a redeemer. That's Job we're talking about. This kind of relationship only, can, only could have came about through daily praise and worship for God, after God. Again, this relationship I'm talking about that Job had with God, that David had with God, same type of relationship we should have with him, a daily relationship of praise and worship of God, then we are overcomers. We are overcomers because we do that. Number three, again, talking about why Job, the reason Job was an overcomer. You must respect and love God's word. Mm. You must respect and love God's word. Job understood the importance of the Bible before there was even a Bible. Before there was even a Bible. Whatever, whoever taught Job, whatever Job learned through his praise and worship and prayer time, had to come from the man up top. And he would meditate that on he would meditate on that. Even before the Bible, Job knew the importance of God's word. Job 23 and 12 says, Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the word of his mouth more than the necessary food. Did you understand that? He hungered after the word more than he did food. Boys, if sometimes, I mean, I'm guilty of it myself. If I miss a meal, whoo, it's rough. But Job was different. Job was overcome. He wanted the word more than his food. 
That's what he was hungry for. Yes, we need food, but we need the word more important. We need the word more important. The fourth thing is you must prioritize your life and live accordingly. Joe lived a a prioritized life. You know, we look at it, Joe in 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 chapter Joe chapter thirty one. We, we see there where he did not withhold from the poor. Joe was a person. He was a person that gave. Uh, he did not withhold from the poor. Jay, Joe Joe was one of those person that would walk around and would give other people something if it was even his last. You can look at Joe in the daytime. Joe would be one of those nurse or doctor on the front line fighting this virus right now. One of, the, one of those EMS person that all fighting on the front line for us. That was Joe. Joe was that type of person that would, would, would not withhold from anything. Joe was a giver. He didn't mind giving. He didn't hold back. Joe had a lot, but Joe was a giver. And that only come because of that daily relationship he had with his father. He didn't put his hope in gold and didn't rejoice because of his great wealth. Again, let me, let me read that again. He didn't put his hope in gold and didn't rejoice because of his great wealth. Job wasn't going around bragging about his great wealth. As we saw that when he lost everything, Immediately, he began to worship him and praise him. It wasn't about his wealth. It wasn't about the gold. It was about his relationship. And God noted that's why he allowed Satan to test Job. But thank be, thank be to God that Job passed the test. And a lot of times we being tested... And we got to make sure we're ready to pass the test. He served those that was in need. He he fed those that was hungry. He closed those that could not close themselves. You know, again, I, again, I say, if God is for you, who could be against you? And then as I said, with, even with Psalms. 118 and 6. The Lord is on your side. I am an overcomer. You are an overcomer. And guys, we got we got to understand that the earth is the Lord. And the, the earth is the Lord in the fullness thereof. In the world that they that dwell therein. This world is a battleground. And we must fight in this world. We wrestle not against flesh or blood. Let me give you an overcoming quote. Overcoming quote. Be of good cheer. Do not think of today's failure, but of the success that may come tomorrow. You have set yourself a difficult task, but you will succeed if you preserve and you will find a find a joy in overcoming whatever in your way. Again, be of good cheer. Do not think of today's failure, but of the success that may come tomorrow. You have set yourself a difficult tomorrow. You have set yourself a difficult task, but you will succeed if you preserve and you will find a joy in overcoming things ahead of you. Again, this evening, hopefully I have said and shared something with you on this, on this Wednesday evening at Bible study. The biggest thing I want you to know is that, that if you get nothing else out of here, that you are an overcomer. I am an overcomer. Regardless of what's going on in our life, there's many things going on that we can't control, and that's okay because we know God is in control. But we know that we have the victory. 
Again, we have the victory because it was, it was, it was told to us that we have the victory because of Jesus Christ at Calvary. That's why we have the victory. And guys, you have the victory. And you must understand every victory do not mean that you come in first. Every victory again could be that I finished the race, that I started the race. That's the victory, not giving up. That's an overcomer. Again, you are an overcomer. I'd like to take this time to thank you for, for sharing your time with me. Also, uh, at this time, you know, you look right there, I think at the bottom, uh, that you would take time to sow into Harvest City Church. This is good ground to sow into. You know, the things we do here at Harvest uh, City Church that is, is going out into the community. We go out and pick up other college students to come to church, to do different things. We go use it to go visit people. So this is good ground that you can sow in. So I ask you right now, if you didn't mind that you could sow a seed right now into good ground, sow a seed in you, that you are overcoming. Let the devil know right now, let the devil know that you are overcome because he thinks that you wouldn't sow. But you sow tonight and you let him know that you are overcome. You put it back in his face. Take it and put it in his face. Mash it down in his face that you are overcome. I'd like to take this time to thank you and hope that you enjoy the rest of your evening. May you be blessed. And we just thank Jesus Christ for, being, for looking over us and guiding us. Amen.